It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? And, uh, take your Bibles, and we're going to use them some tonight. I think we're going to turn to two different texts. First Samuel, Second Samuel, chapter number eleven, and uh, and then we're going to turn over in a little while over here to to Galatians, chapter two. And if that text makes any of y'all nervous, then you're not a Bible lover. Amen. Amen. We love the Word of God. Amen. And uh, I've got all these notes. I used to use no notes whatsoever, and then I started coming over here and watching Brother Cooper preach. And uh, somebody help me, man. I took a, a notebook with me tonight. I don't know where I'm going first. I got three or four sermons up here. And. Uh, Brother Bobby Robertson was preaching one time. We were preaching together. He's on the platform, and he had just a stack of them, brother, in the back of his Bible. I mean, there's a stack of outlines. And I said, "Which one of them you gonna preach tonight?" He said, "I won't need any of them if God shows up." <laughs> and uh, and I hope God does show up. And I've enjoyed you honoring my daddy. A lot of people know my daddy. They don't know my granddaddy. There's a lot you don't know, but my my granddaddy was a great man. Most of you probably don't know that he he was the one that warned of the sinking of the Titanic. He, he was a warn, he would give warning, he, he would holler out, said, that iceberg's going to sink that ship. And that iceberg's going to sink that ship. But nobody would listen, they just threw him out of the theater. Somebody said, hey man, right there. <laughs> That's funny. I had y'all on that, man. <laughs> but I want to communicate tonight. And uh, sometimes it's hard to communicate. Man, we've heard such good preaching. I'm glad we're not competing. And uh, we're on the same side. And, but I heard about two twin boys born down in Louisiana. And they, they named them Huda and Duda. And oh, oh, Huda, he. He stuttered all the time, and I'm not making fun of people that stutter, but he could, he, 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 he could hardly, especially when he got, got excited. And they were coming home from school, and uh, a log truck run slap cadaver over Duda and killed him right there. Man, he just took off running to the house. And he, 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 he said, my mama, my mama, mama, li, li, listen, to, she said, sing it, son, sing it. He said, someone died at school today, do-da, do-da. Yeah. I'm trying. I got to look to my wife for approval on that. One, one fellow was getting married. It was a few minutes before the service, the ceremony. Man, he was just shaking all over. Nervous. I'm nervous. I mean, I've been sweating since I got walked in the building. And just nerves. And he was sweating all over. And he, man, he come out of the restroom and the preacher saw him, said, Son, said, calm down. Said, everything's gonna be all right. Said, you know, I'd be so nervous. He said, I ain't nervous, I ain't nervous. He said, Then why are you coming out of the ladies' restroom for then? You know, nervous. <laughs> God help us. Chapter eleven. And uh, you can stand if you want to. You don't have to stand to reverence God's Word. Or you couldn't listen to the radio and hear preaching. I was in North Georgia preaching up in Gainesville, Georgia. And you got to beware of the, of the leaven of the Pharisees. Uh, I do like to stand. I don't mind standing. But I was in the midst of some Pharisees. And they wanted to catch me doing something wrong. And so I just started reading my text. And they all jumped up, you know, like, we're going to catch the evangelist. He's, he didn't have a stand. And so I thought, well, that's, and they, they really distracted. But what they wanted was attention on them. Look how spiritual we are. And uh, so I said, well, I said, uh, hold up just a minute. I see y'all like to stand. I said, let's turn to Psalms 119. <laughs> Beware, be, Pharisees like titles. Pharisees like that title, Dr. So-and-so. Dr. So-and-so. And, 
They, they, like, they want to know who sits in Moses' seat. They can't fellowship with you if their favorite preacher is not your favorite preacher. My daddy uh, pastored in Atlanta, Georgia when he was in his youth and until he passed. He left there in the mid-70s and took the editorship of the Soul of the Lord. But while he was there he met a man named Berman Cape who uh, is the predecessor to Brother Ricky Gravely there at Bible Baptist Church. They had asked him, said, who's your favorite preacher? My dad answered, he said, Berman Cape's my favorite preacher. And they, 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 who is he? You know, that, that bother, it bothers people if you don't like who they like. Yeah. Come on. That's Phariseeism. That's right. Right. Now I'm, I'm against everything. You understand? I'm so narrow minded. I believe a gnat could stand on the bridge of my nose and kick both eyeballs at the same time. <laughs> but Pharisees are more interested with the outside than they are the inside. Pharisees don't preach on jealousy and envy much. They mean malice. They just preach on what they can see. There's more to it than that. Let's be aware of those Pharisees. So, let's stand together and we won't stand all night. Chapter 11, verse 1, And it came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass that in an evening tide, that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. Notice these three words. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba? the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Our Heavenly Father, we're living in a day where silence from the pulpit concerning crucial issues is almost deafening. And tonight as I preach, I yield myself to you the best way I know how. From the top of my head, the sole of my feet, it is my desire to please you. And you can do this, so I ask you to do this. Guard my lips from saying anything that should not be said. I'm asking you, sweet Holy Ghost, to restrain me from saying anything that ought not be said. You're powerful, and I yield myself to you. At the same time, I pray you give me backbone and courage to say everything that I ought to say in such a crucial hour of compromise, such a crucial hour of ecumenicalism, such a crucial hour of weakness. And Lord, help us to develop some strength in these last days. You said strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. And I pray tonight you'd revive us again. Speak through me. And I do want to thank you for what's already been preached. And there's not, not anything that I've heard that I've disagreed with. And I thank you, Lord, that you spoke to my heart, spoke to my wife and daughter's heart, and the thousands by way of the internet access. But help us tonight to leave this meeting with a determination to have an impact in this old dark hour of the Laodicean church age. Let us leave here on fire for you, for we ask it now in the name that's above every name, in Jesus' name, and may long live old time religion till you come again. Amen. Amen. And you can be seated. <clears throat> Charles Haddon Spurgeon made a quote. I've got a book of his quotes. One of the most unrecognized quotes that he ever made. You don't see it published much, but it was this. That a man seldom repents of silence. A man seldom repents of silence. We have a whole lot of admission today. There's preaching there at the touch of a finger. You can look at anybody you want to look at, any style of preaching you want to hear, any denomination you want to hear, any doctrinal twist, any, any vein jangling or any swerving. You can find it at the internet access, probably holding in your lap, holding in your hand tonight. And there's a whole lot of omission. Can I say that what's being said and preached a lot of it's good, 
a lot of the crowd that does not bear our title, Baptist, we're Baptist. We're independent, fundamental, premillennial missionary. King James, we're not ecumenicalist. And we believe in biblical separation. Now look at me just a minute. Separation is as much a Bible doctrine as the blood atonement is. Not just holiness. I'm not just talking about personal separation, I'm talking about ecclesiastical separation. And there's a whole lot of preaching going on that's good and it's not all bad what they're saying, it's just what they're not saying. It's what they leave out of the message. We don't have options as men of God. We're supposed to be faithful. The Bible said, moreover, a steward is required that he be found faithful, and we don't get to pick and choose. I mean, we got to preach the whole counsel of God, whether it's received or rejected. And here's a man the Bible tells us about. I don't know who he was. I've got an idea, Brother Ricky. He was uh, in chapter 12. He might have been Nathan. And, and I got a right to my opinion, like the internet folks have a right to theirs. Somebody say amen. Now, I'm not going to say it was Nathan, but I'm not going to say it wasn't. Because when nobody else would say anything, David had all kind of advisors. He's the king. He had all kind of men that were subordinate to him that he could command to do. And they were there to watch, to help, to, to be a, a wall of protection against the king, to keep him from making a mess. There was one stood there when he inquired of the woman, verse 3, and one said, is not this Bathsheba? One. One said. John the Baptist said, I'm the voice of one. Not a big crowd's going to stand in these last days. Elijah said, I, even I only. Now we understand there's 7,000 that hadn't bent the knee or hadn't kissed yet the, 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 the image, but where were they? Where's the 7,000 when you need them? Somebody say amen. They're on their Facebook. Amen. Criticizing Elijah for fighting the enemy. Criticizing Elijah for being too extreme by cutting off the 850 false prophets' heads. You know, he's taking it a little too far now. But he stood by himself. Y'all know the story. Jehoshaphat's talking with Ahab. We better go to war. And he said, well, ask the prophets. And the prophets, oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be fine. And he said, is there any ovens? Any ovens, that's in our vernacular. That means, is anybody else? He said, well, there's this one old boy named Micaiah. But I hate him. I can't stand him. The question was proposed, I mean, is there any, and he, he, said, he said, there is yet one. Now, now look at me, if you're going to stand against and stand for, against the wrong things and for the right things, don't think there's going to be an entourage around you. Honest to God, I mean, I believe there's these brethren today, they're so, they're so dependent upon me and my gang. I mean, they got to have somebody. Somebody to like them on Facebook. Somebody to give their approval. But if you're going to stand for long, you'll have, to, you'll have to learn to stand a long. And here's a man who speaks up, and I'm sure there's those that are surrounding him that are probably saying, man, I don't know if I'd say that. Because the stand that he made, the statement that he spoke, and by the way, that's our warfare. Our weapons are not carnal, but they're spiritual. So they're pulling down a stronghold. What we're involved in is preaching, saying something. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come, and it has come, when they not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. Lust is a desire for the forbidden. There's, there's, some, there's some boundaries we have by the Bible. It's not set by a pope of the independent movement. There is none. But there's Bible boundaries. Come out from among them. I, happy ye separate, thus saith the toy Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I'll receive you. And I'll be a father, and you'll be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. But he said, man, you've got to preach it. Preach the word. 
for the time will come where they'll not endure sound doctrine. They'll make up their own rules. Double-minded, have it their own way. By the way, you can't have it both ways. I'm going to take my time and preach tonight. Has come, but they're going to heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Man, you take a stand, all the teachers come with their hackles up. I mean, they go to making their little comments on social media. Amen, when you take a stand. But this man said something at the right time. You know, really, if I could title my message, I know it's not grammatically correct, but it'll work on my North Carolina brethren. I would like to preach for about two and a half hours on this right here. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Amen. I know it's nobody is saying anything, but double negatives work real good to make your point. Amen. What I meant to say was, hey, it's 2024. It, we're in the Laodicean church age and the sun is setting on this thing. Hey, and ain't nobody saying nothing. But here's one man, the Bible said, and one said. One of them said, hey, this is Bathsheba. I want you to think with me in this introduction. I'm going to get to the message. I got three of them. When you take a stand, most of the time it'll be a singular stand. I'm learning and I've got a good family. I've got daughters and a son in church. But I'm learning that, man, you can't always count on your family. You can't always count on church members. Paul said at the first accusation, no man stood with me. But he said, notwithstanding, praise God, the Lord stood with me. And I'd rather be standing with God than standing with the crowd. Amen. Yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're dealing in, in an hour of, of faith and practice that's being violated right in front of our eyes and ain't nobody saying nothing. Can I say that it's a stressful statement? He's got David here and David's guards I mean, don't you know David had some pretty good agents surrounding him? I mean, he, he, had, he had some bad boys, 137 mighty men, and every one of them will whoop you like a barefoot stepchild. <laughs> and he's going to speak up in objection. It's stressful. I'll never forget it. It'll be stressful on your family if you'll stand. Preachers are taking, taking the, the, the soft way out in this hour because with, with the plea of, well, I, I don't want to put my family under that duress. It was back in the late 80s. I'll never forget, I was at Liberty University and uh, I was there on scholarship and Dr. Curtis Hudson, y'all heard of him. <laughs> he had a paper at that time, had over a half a million subscribers. I don't know what it's down to now. But people used to read the sword. And man, I remember coming from our mailboxes and man, all these preacher boys was looking through this paper and they was looking at me hard. And I go, back at you, hoss. I got a sharp boker tree band in my pocket. Don't look too long. I'll cut you down like a weed. They, 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 Brother Ricky, they'd look at me going, well, what's going on? Then I got to the mailbox and opened the mailbox and on the cover it said the dangerous direction of Jerry Falwell <laughs> and Tim Lee. Amen. Right below it said ecumenical gathering in Jacksonville. Are y'all okay? <laughs> ecumenical, a round robin of Southern Baptist and Independent Baptist blending together. This was in the 80s. I was on the campus. Daddy didn't call me and give me a heads up. <laughs> now, Tony, just want you to know I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to split her down the middle here. 
We're going to see who's really a Bible-believing fundamentalist or one of them pseudo, one of them quasi. Amen. We're going to see who's going to stand or who's going to, who's going to yoke up with that other crowd. I, he didn't give me any. I didn't get a letter through the mail. I didn't, he, I, he didn't send smoke signals. All I got was hard looks from everybody on the campus. And by the way, I was Jerry Falwell's bodyguard at the time. That was a warm welcome next time I saw him. <laughs> but now we want to have a stand without any cost. We want to say, we want to say nothing because if we say anything, I mean, if we name, now you can generically say it, I mean, but as long as you just categorize it in big chunks, but when you go to narrowing it down and naming out what's going on in these last days, you know, Romans, the last chapter. Let's turn over there. I ain't got through with this Samuel yet, but we're coming back to it. Romans chapter 16. Y'all got a King James? Yeah. If you don't, just throw what you've got on the ground look on with somebody that does. Verse 17, chapter 16. I beseech ye, brethren, mark them that cause divisions and offenses. Why are we always the one they're saying is dividing? When they're leaving us, when this millennial crowd, these younger generation, these third generation Christians are leaving us and they call us the dividers. Said Markham, that, that, that divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, how to avoid them. For they are such that serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, they're, they're professional manipulators. They know how to just say the right words. They deceive the hearts of the simple. Y'all listen to me. Mark them. Mark them. I've got some doctrine been taught me. It's called ecclesiastical separation. And it's been taught me. I'm a King James man. I was taught this. You don't have to like this. I'm going to preach it anyway now. And I'm not rubbing shoulders with somebody that rubs shoulders with somebody that rubs shoulders that's ordaining women preachers. I meant to say I'm not, I'm not rubbing shoulders. Somebody rubs shoulders. It's rubbing shoulders with somebody that endorses the ESV. And I'm not rubbing shoulders with somebody that rubs shoulders. with some, You say, that's 33rd degree. So call it what you want to. It's called come out from among them-ism. It's called come out from among them. It's what Dr. Seitler taught me. You say, oh, he wasn't that bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, his grandson might have left and joined a Southern Baptist church, but I'm not following him. I'm following Seitler because I was taught. Here's how Seitler was about Southern Baptists. I mean, I couldn't believe it. He, 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 he said, he, now, now, now we've got a children's home at Tabernacle. And said, it's independent Baptist children's home. He said, if you have Southern Baptist children, send them down to Sevierville. I'm talking about orphans. Y'all y'all saying we're taking it too far. Look at me now. Y'all died on that one. Hey, I don't know much about fishing. When I get hung on a stump, I just keep circling until I pull off, praise God. Hey, man, right there. Hey, hey, somebody got to draw a line somewhere. Mark them. Mark them. It's stressful. Nobody, I'd like to preach that happy message too. Hey man, three steps to a better self-image, all of that stuff. <laughs> and I wish there was not all, the brother said about, you know, all this, all this gossip. Well, let me say that apologetics is not gossiping. And to speak evil of no man is to intend to hurt somebody. But earnestly contending for the faith, you're going to have to say something. And what I meant to say, my text tonight is, ain't nobody saying nothing. The papers ain't saying nothing, Brother Patrick. Don't you judge me, Brother Patrick. I'll judge you back right now. Amen. The papers ain't saying nothing. The colleges, they got long-haired people coming in preaching creationism. Somebody help me with an NIV Bible. You say, I wouldn't do that. I was invited to preach. I'll say what I want to say. Amen, friend. 
Very few is going to say anything, but the Bible said, but one said, but one said, but one said, one said, David, this ain't right. It's strenuous. You start standing in this hour, and you I'm just going to mind my business in my church. You can't do that and be God called. Your people have the internet access whether you know how to use it or not. I'm one that doesn't. But they know how to use it and they see all that. And all these rock star, young preachers, they're, they're sucking our children in. To their strobe light, airplane light, blue light. My deacons told me those old pink pastel lights is what they have in these, in these strip tea clubs. I don't know, that's what my deacons told me. Same color. Their buildings look like a warehouse. Got exposed ductwork up in the ceiling. Painted black smoke coming off the floor. It's preaching time now. I'm talking about, man, it's strenuous. It's so strenuous it'll affect you physically. Not just your family, but it'll affect you. It'll affect your flesh. And if you stay straight and preach, it'll affect your future. But I'd rather have God than invitations. It'll cut you off with a lot of the brethren because they say, well, we don't know what he's going to say. Hey, I'd rather be known for what I am going to be say than be invited somewhere for what I'm not going to say. Amen, friend. Can I preach what God's, oh, I am going to, anyhow. I'll never forget this, Brother Gravely. Before you was born, my daddy said, we're going to go hear a preacher tonight, Tony. He was a Southern Baptist preacher named Vance Havner. All of you have read his books. If you hadn't, you need to get them. Had them good old, old country one-liners, Southern one-liners. He's from North Carolina. Great preacher, had a great, he was a, he was a defender. I'll never forget it, man. We got in the car and we were riding down the road and going out to the country. I think it was down there around between Georgia. There's a place called Bet- it's between Georgia. You know where it's at. And you know, we were going, that's where you at. We, we're in between. <laughs> but between Georgia. And this church on the side of the road, we went to that church, gravel parking lot. And Daddy kept talking about, you're going to hear Vance Havner. And Daddy had said, and tears get in his eyes. He said, he's one of the best that you ever heard. Then I got there to hear Vance Havner, about four cars in the parking lot. And I'm thinking, Vance Havner, we're going to see somebody call down on fire. Vance Havner. Daddy said, man, he's, and Daddy went in there, man, he had his Bible, he was excited. He, while that man preached, there might have been 10, 11 people in the building, and he wept. My daddy sat there and wept. I wasn't even saved, but I knew something was going on. When we got back out in the car, I said, Daddy, I thought this preacher was like, he said, son, son, he is a great one. But said, when you take a stand, sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes when you're standing on a platform like this, and you think the brethren are with you, but you mention ecclesiastical separation, it's like it's not in the Bible. Like somebody cut that page out. There's boundaries. There's people we don't need to yoke up with. There's places. Dangerous, friend. I say this, when did he make this? The moment that he made this statement, it was a time of neutral contentment. Look what he said, in the days when kings went to war, he stepped up when people were just doing nothing. We have more activity going on, and I, I'm, not, I'm not grouping all churches together, but I'm saying as a whole, there's more activity going on today in Baptist churches, more functions going on. We've got something on the internet every day, got some kind of announcement, and with less results than we've ever seen. Because we're content. We're content to go Sunday after Sunday with nobody being saved. Somebody needs to say something about a church who can turn their back on the bus ministry. Who can turn their back on door to door soul winning? Who can turn their back on a Sunday school? 
What about that going to highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house be? Suffer little children. Uh, suffer little, that means make a way. Suffer little children to come unto me. Had forbid them not, uh, for such is the kingdom of heaven. We've gotten comfortable doing nothing. People gotten comfortable saying nothing. David's laid up on his bed at evening tide. Evening tide's when the sun goes down. He was getting up when the sun went down. He must have been working third shift. Somebody help me. It was a day of notable confusion. Notable confusion. Here's a day where David the king is going to take one of his soldiers' wives. He's going to conceive a, a son of a soldier. That, this, that ain't the way it's supposed to be. Nathan said, David, there was this man down the road, had a little lamb. David, there was this man down the road, had a little lamb, and they raised him like their daughter. And a rich man came by, and he wouldn't even kill his own lamb. He had a whole flock full, and he took that little poor man's lamb, and he killed it and fed his guest. And David said, who is that man? He said, thou art the man. Thou art the man. A day of notable confusion. Things are so confused now. We're blaming, we're blaming the messenger for the problem. Everybody sides with, the, with those that have, have, have been out of the will of God, who've broken the rules of God. They side with those who've erred, not to those who exposed the error. You don't have to be sinless to preach against sin. Amen. God used a donkey one time. He used a rooster one time. Amen. You don't have to be perfect to hold up the standard. You know, you can fall down and get back up. Get on it now, I'm on ya. Hey, hey, hey. Well, look who, look who called it. Well, look who, I'm telling you what's going on today. Somebody's gotta say something. Why don't some good men say something, you know? Why don't some of those been trained and taught to say something? Why don't some periodicals say something? Amen. Oh, it's quiet, but I ain't, this, that, I ain't got through a sermon number one yet. The moment, it was a time of national calamity. It, it become a mockery. Israel was becoming a mockery. We've got a king who's going out here and marrying, get, getting stealing wives from his soldiers and sending, his, sending a letter. They sent a letter by, by Joab. David sent a letter. And that letter haunted David. I believe that messed up the nation. That letter, that letter had old David bound by Joab the rest of his ministry. The nation of Israel, hey, was absolutely plagued with trouble after trouble. I mean, the house of David was overrun with trouble after trouble, all because he did not listen to the messenger. That ain't your wife. That's your eyes, wife. He didn't just say it's, it's your eye. He didn't just say it's Bathsheba. He, he said it's her wife. Amen. What he said was a revelation. Some people don't know that's why we have to tell them. We can't just run around with our head in the sand. I don't see anything wrong with it. You got to be taught some things are wrong with it. You got to be shown the Bible. You got to be explained the truth. And well, I just don't see anything wrong. How you got to be, by the way, preachers ought to say something about this immodest dress. How long, how long do you have to be saved before you quit dressing like Madonna and Lady Gaga and bringing that junk on the platform? Preachers, you don't run their homes, but you run the platform. There's lots of ways you can say, you know, preacher, when she starts coming up with that miniskirt on. There's ways you can say, you can say Dr. Trevor's got his way, you know. We do it a little different at home. We say, uh-uh. <laughs> Ma'am, ain't no way. <laughs> Have you lost your ever-loving mind? Hey, 
Hey, over my dead body. Somebody help me. We won't say no. We're saying nothing. Well, we got to give them leaning room. Got to give them growing room. Got to give them leaning room. Man, there's some of this crowd leaning so far that they about to lay down. <laughs> Dr. Tom Malone told my daddy, they was preaching at a Southern Baptist church over there in the, in the, in the early 80s. This man was saying, I'm coming out of the convention. We're having a, bi- having a bus conference. And he ran buses. They had standards. In fact, I dated his daughter a little while at Liberty. And I mean, man, good, good home, good family. I mean, King James only. They, they were, you know, by name only, you know, Southern Baptist. That's what they said. By the way, let me stop and get me back on this. That name only, somebody ought to say something about that. That's like me putting a sign around my neck, I am a homosexual. I am a homosexual. Well, everybody knows me knows I ain't no homosexual. It's just a sign. You know, it's just a sign. You know, but words mean something. And what you take off your sign means something. Well, it says, it says, uh, it says Emmanuel Church. But if you read our doctrinal statement, we're free will. Well, that's good enough for me not to go. I'm not yoking up with an Arminian. Might as well go to a Church of God church. Don't get mad. He asked me to preach. Don't bow your head. I'm not ready to pray yet. I believe in everlasting life. If if, if I didn't, I wouldn't be a Baptist. We believe in eternal life. We believe in eternal life. We don't rub shoulders with crowd who cast a doubt on the Bible. The Bible said, and I give unto them temporary life. No, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That's what the Bible said. It's a revelation to some. What he said was a restraint. They may not receive our words, Brother Darrell, but the words are recorded. I'm going to give an account not for what my people do, but for what my people hear. I'm going to give an account for this opportunity here. It sobers me. I don't think this generation even thinks about the Bema seat. Because if you don't play by the rules, you don't get anything. If you strive, you got to strive lawfully. The Bible's got boundaries how we do this thing. There's the right way, it's called the Bible way. There's the wrong way, it's the world's way. Amen. It was rebuke. Two thirds of your preaching ministry is to reprove and rebuke. It's 2 Timothy 4. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove and rebuke. Then exhort. Now I'm for camp meeting messages. I'm for happy. We need some happy. But two thirds of a pastor's responsibility is to bust hide. I'm talking about preaching ought to be, I'm talking preaching ought to be, I'm talking about hide on the wall Amen. Guts on the floor and blood in the cracks, praise God. Now it's a little sermonette for a Christianette dressed like a majorette, driving that Corvette, smoking that cigarette. Help me now. And the ecumenical evangelist coming by. I'm tired of these evangelists come preach all these happy messages. Making friends with all my people and I'm the bad guy. Amen. Somebody ought, to, somebody ought to come in and back what you preach. Stand where you stand. Amen. Why he said it? Well, I mean, it's required. It's required. Preach the word. Not the part you like. That's plural. There's responsibility involved. He felt like if I don't do it, who? Let me ask y'all something. If y'all won't go back home and say something, Who's going to? Who's going to call out this crowd who's like the Pied Piper leading all our young people? Oh, it's not all of them. Yeah, I'm telling you, we're losing them. We've losing in our families. We lose our family members to this new bunch of, this neo bunch of left leaning evangelical. They're, they're evangelical. They're not, they're not fundamentalist. They're not leaving to, they're not, they're pseudo. 
They're quasi, they're not even real. They don't even want the term fundamental. As weak as it's getting, I'm, I'm sticking with Bible believing Baptists. Somebody say amen. amen. This thing's getting so weak, watered down now. I, I'm a Bible believing Baptist, praise God. Amen. Thank you, Brother Darrell. I ain't even got to the message yet. I'm coming to the message. How he told them his method. The Bible says he go forth and weepeth. Can I tell you that some of these men that are leaders in our circles that I've known for years, been in the yoke with, I've wept. There's two or three preachers in this room I've called you and cried and said, I wouldn't have that man. And I wouldn't run with that crowd. And I've wept over it. I'm, I'm thinking of two right now in this building that I've called and wept. And I said, I think you're making a bad choice. Your predecessor fought that. And did I say I'm not going to rub shoulders with the Calvinist either? Amen. I ain't getting around that crowd that want sovereignty, sovereignty, sovereignty. All they want to talk sovereignty, sovereignty. So, we know what sovereignty is. Sovereignty is God doing what He wants to, when He wants to, the way He wants to, and He doesn't need your permission. Sovereignty has nothing to do with unconditional election. Sovereignty has nothing to do, look at me, with irresistible grace. That's false doctrine. That's false doctrine. You might as well, you might as well baptize babies. You might as well baptize babies. It's false doctrine. Dead man, am I, am I okay? It's too late to say anything now. I've wept with men in this room and I said, and I mean, and I, please don't, I, you're gonna hurt yourself. It's not good. Well, you should never call anybody out until you talk to them first. Well, what about when you've talked to them for 20 years? After 20 years saying, man, look, you you better back off that crowd. Let me just say C.T. Townsend ain't got nothing to offer our young people. I wouldn't send a poodle dog to learn how to bark, learn how to jump, but to go to a C.T. Townsend youth conference. And hey man, don't you buy it. You say, I don't know who he is. I hope you don't. Now they all getting nervous. Hey man. Suave and cool. Contemporary music. Play one, one I'll fly away song and then about 10 of them other Ya, ya, wah, wah. Amen. 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 But I've wept with them. And I've warned them. You say, who are you? Are you the authority? No, but I've been around a long, long time. And I've been taught something. And I'm supposed to say something. And one said... And one said, this ain't right. This ain't right. And when you weep and when you warn, then you better watch. Because what will happen, the same thing that they're falling prey to, you'll fall prey to. The same very thing. Well, you'll say, well, not not me. Oh, yeah, you better be careful. You get softer the you get older. You get softer. Most of the time, preachers get softer. And when their children have children, then the standards they had for their children soften on their grandchildren. It doesn't happen some of the time. Hey, it happens all the time. You better be watching. You better keep your hand on the pulse. You better be, hey, I'm telling you, because when, when, you, when you stand and when you say and when you speak and when you stand for God in a day of apostasy, in a day of apathy, in a day of audacity, I can't believe these 40-year-old preachers, they think they're the final authority on preaching now. They all got a, any 30-year-old, 40-year-old man quoting himself, ain't he full of pride? 30 year old quoting their self. Honestly, you just don't know how stupid you look. 
Dr. Howells told me, I was preaching up there, and he said, uh, before we died, he said, I want to talk to you in office. He said, let me give you some words for advice for the future. Don't write books. He was telling me. He said, just stick to preaching. Let me help y'all. Best thing for you to do is go back and say something. I guarantee you, you won't have to post it. If you'll say something stout, if you'll say something true, it'll get on there. <laughs> Ah, if you say something, friend, that rubs the world's grain the wrong way, if you stand for God, you won't have to post a blessed fired thing. They'll make sure it gets on there for them. They'll make sure. We're to watch. That's message one. Turn with me to Galatians. Well, I just tell you now, I just don't believe in calling names. Verse 11, chapter 2, Galatians. I know you're going to say, well, that's not written to the church. Well, you probably went to PBI. Somebody help me. Where I wished I'd have went. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse number 11. But when Peter was in Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. Now what that means was he was wrong. You deep Greek students help me. He's to be blamed. So if he's to be blamed, he must have been wrong. When, you, when you're preaching for anything, anywhere, all them boat rides, I don't understand all that being spiritual. I don't understand all this boat, getting on this boat with a bunch of singers, ain't got no clothes on. A bunch of 40, 45 year old women laid out there, on, getting sunbathed in a bikini, singing in a quartet. A member of Assembly of God. You don't have to like this, you can lump this, friend. If you think I'm scared of you, you really are wrong. Amen. I was preaching before I'll come in here and I'll be preaching when I leave out of here. I, 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 listen, I'm not running with that crowd. How did that get in here? Oh, he told him, said he was wrong. Oh, yeah, that, that's, hey, listen, that, all this worldliness. Christians ought to live separate. Lady ought to look like a lady. Man ought to look like a man. Some of you boys around here need to get a deeper voice. Somebody say amen. amen. See what you taking. Amen. He withstood him to his face. Now notice verse 12. For before that certain came from James and he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come he withdrew and separated himself. Fearing them which were of the circumcision, and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. What you do, what we let get by, who we give a card to, it's going to affect you. When we start giving the body, well, he gets by. Well, imagine this Paul talking to this fellow. He said, he said, for when I saw that he walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, he said, I said, they're going to get real critical. That's just the gospel. No, it's, it, I'm telling you, the traditions of men. We're to mark those that won't follow those so that they can be ashamed. He said, the gospel, I said unto Peter, therefore, he said, before them all, underline that phrase. Where did he say it at? Well, he done been, to, he, hey, well, I guess he didn't get to, you know, have a private conversation. They don't tell you all this liberal crowd about how many times they've been confronted, how many messages they've let wall, what, what Dr. Seitler preached when they was a boy, and Mother Mays preached, and Audrey Green preached, and Dr. Howells preached, and Daddy preached, and they made, took a stand. They don't tell you about all that. They just let that run off their back. Like they hadn't been told. And then all of a sudden, Peter's the bad guy. Well, he is. Paul's the one who's standing right. And he said to him, Peter, before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles and not as the, do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as the Jews do? Y'all staying here? Well, I wouldn't call, if that had been today on the internet, 
Paul put on Facebook, Peter, you ought not be doing that. If he was to put on his Instagram, his YouTube channel and say, hey, Peter, that's not right. And it, y'all getting quiet. Peter, that's not right what you're doing. In fact, it's, uh, you're to be blamed. I can see it on the Facebook. Who are you? I can see all that. Paul, do you think you're better than Peter? Do you know how many people got saved on Pentecost? Have you ever preached and seen 3,000 bodies? Who else is going to get to preach it but Billy Graham? And he wouldn't. If you got to have 3,000 souls saved on one day to be qualified to rebuke and reprove, then who's going to say anything? I can see it on, can't y'all see it? Can everybody see it on the internet? Uh, you sound mean spirited. I mean, man, man, you should have done this in private. And then go to telling young preachers, well, I wouldn't sit under a pastor who calls out people in public. Well, then you wouldn't sit under Paul, would you? You wouldn't sit under Jesus. Amen. Can y'all, can y'all see him? Well, <laughs> we all make mistakes. So I got to quit preaching on sin because I get mad every once in a while. I won't tell you all the rest of them. Don't you see that? You can't stand for anything because you're mean spirited. It ain't none of, well, we all serve the same Lord. Don't you know he, he's a headline speaker? at the conferences. Don't you know everybody likes him? Don't you know he's one of the best preachers we got? Talent's not a qualification. I wouldn't do that. You want to happen when you compromise? Then you've got to have to reach a place of character. Your character is going to get marred. Because then you've got to lie for your compromise. Then you start lying for your compromise. Then you start trying to cover up your compromise. And you start, he that diggeth the pit falleth therein. Can I help y'all? I think if y'all want to leave, you can. I'm going to stay here and preach a little while. I, all this preaching, I've been wanting to say something. Somebody ought to say something. And my message tonight is... Ain't nobody saying nothing. Ain't nobody saying nothing about it. My daddy died yesterday, 29 years ago, with the burden of ecumenicalism bearing down. And I've had the older preachers who fought him. That BBF fought daddy over Jerry Falwell. I had, I had John Rollins call me at 97 years old and say, Brother Tony, I want to tell you your daddy was right. He said, I'm going to go the other side. He said, before I leave, I want you to know your daddy was right about Jerry Falwell. But he fought him. But I believe daddy died early grave. Never smoked a cigarette, never drank a beer. But the stress and the pressure of standing, standing. Y'all don't know him. Willard Thomas, not Willard Thomas, but his brother, what's his brother's name? Edgar. Brother Edgar, one of our heroes. We know Edgar Thomas. He's our hero. But he got for about six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, he was leaning Calvinism. And he's on the radio when Daddy preached on the radio on WGUN there in Atlanta, big gun. And man, he'd preach and he'd get on there and he got to leaning towards that Calvinism, teaching Calvinism, irresistible grace. He was preaching at Harriman. Daddy was in heaven. He's preaching over at Harriman. I can't think of that brother's name, but you know my, uh, Plemons. And he called me and he said, he said, brother, he talked like this. He said, Brother Tony, I want to talk to you. He said, I'm fixed to go to the other side. And said, but I want to tell you something before I go. He said, I didn't get to tell Curtis. But he said, Curtis was right. And I got cold chills. I said, Brother Edgar, you don't know me and Paul, you my hero. 
He said, no, no, I was wrong. I got in a ditch. He said, I got in a ditch. He said, Curtis was right. Y'all don't want to hear this part. You just want to keep silent and say nothing. They, well, you know, you're just jealous. The reason you're calling that out is because you don't have any meat. Can I help you? I'm getting to the age, honestly, where I'd rather be coon hunting. I'm grateful for the privilege to preach. Don't misunderstand me. The Lord hears me and he knows the intents of the heart. But, and, I, and you can't lie to God. But I'm telling y'all, I'm an old man now. I got two grandkids at the house. I got a good walking horse. I got, I got several hounds, tree of coon. It's a job to come out here. This ain't no adventure, praise God. I'm telling you, it, hey, this is full time, friend. It's not jealousy. It's not looking for another meeting. This is, I, preach, I preach sermons like I'm preaching right now, and I knew it was going to cost me when I preached it. I used to say all the time, you can't do wrong and get by, and it's true, but I've learned you can't do right and get by. You take the stand where you ought to stand, and every time you do, every single time, there's repercussions. Every single time you do it, there's a reproach. There's a reproach in a company standing where you ought to stand. He's jealous. He's full of pride. Internet. You, you mean you're questioning him? No man's above being questioned. No man's above being questioned. Those fair words and fine speeches has got them through for a long time. I think this is sermon number two. We're in a battle. Some of you are like conscientious observers. <laughs> if you don't love it, leave it. Let this song that I'm singing be a warning. Are y'all listening? When you're running down my doctrine horse, you're walking on the fighting side of me. I've been taught better than this. My daddy died preaching this. He died holding a standard of separatism. When we start compromising on these little bits, sooner or later be the gospel. Sooner or later we'll be, bapt- we'll be receiving people in our church that's been baptized by a church of Christ. I've never asked a convert, are you pleased with your mode of baptism? No, is God pleased with it? If you was baptized by a tongue-talking, fire-breathed apostolic, hey, you're going to get redunked at our church. If you was baptized by a Camelite bunch of Church of Christ, you're going to get it twice, amen. <laughs> Pedo-baptism, talking about, hey, God, help. there ain't no Bible for that. That's where it all leads to, charismatics, that music that they use. Well, if you don't believe in that music, why are you preaching it to places where they use that music? Amen. And you watch that crowd, the first thing coming is a pink light around the cross at the baptistry. And a little glass pulpit. Somebody say amen. I'd feel like I was naked preaching behind something like that. Somebody say amen. The audacity. Nobody speaks against it. The apathy, nobody. I mean, and here's this Sam's dude who, from over here somewhere who's telling everybody how to go back and take a church from a King James position into a ESV. Look, look up in here. And, and we got people who, from our generation who's taking pictures with them. Rubbing, I don't even take pictures with Hank Jr., buddy, and I'd like one of those. Somebody say Amen. Somebody say amen from the deck over here. If I said Elvis, my wife would say, Whoa! You'll, it's on there forever. What you put on that internet don't go off. 
Amen. Amen. Yeah. Lift your voice loud like a trumpet. Amen. He said, cry loud is what Isaiah said, 58.1. Cry loud and spare not. This is where I'm going to preach for the next hour. On that sparing knot. We get to picking what we don't want to preach. Spare knot was a military term. That meant when you go in, the, the, the general, the colonel would say, Now you're going in this village and kill them all. Don't leave anything. Saul had the mistake of sparing, it wrecked him. It wrecked Saul, and when you spare in your preaching, it's going to come back to bite you like a big old tiger will. He spared not, and it cost him. He kept back the best. Well, I ain't going to preach that because it may run somebody off. Hey, I've learned this. When people leave our church, God will send three or four to see why they left. You just need to preach on. You just need to go down and spare not. There's not a page of the Bible you ought to be afraid to preach. Second Corinthians 10 said, For our weapons are, 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 of our warfare are not carnal. We can't whoop people. I mean, I've thought about it. If you hadn't, you ain't ever pastored a Baptist church. Our weapons are, he asked Dr. Malone, said, have you ever thought about divorce? He said, no, but I've thought about murder several times, he said. <laughs> now, it's going in one ear and out the other on a bunch of y'all. But you ain't going to be saved to say, I didn't tell you. And when you lose your young people to that crowd, and when you lose your family, I was preaching in West Virginia. I ain't finished all this. I was preaching in West Virginia, and I hit along these lines that ought to be hit on all the time, because all these young people, they ain't heard it. A man came up to me, he said, with tears weeping, he said, I used to be a pastor. He said, my wife got to liking these that were borderline. And said, then it got a little bit worse and said, I noticed her wanting to start changing the way she dressed. Oh, that, I know here, I, know, I already know what your, your rebuttal I know what your rebuttal is. Oh, that could happen anyway. That could happen. With, I'm, 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 I'm telling you what did happen. This is not hypothetical, like all of your arguments. This is a real one. And he said, Brother Tony, weeping. He said, She got with that crowd. And that crowd's that that crowd. That's that that's that moderate. That's that used to be us. It's not us anymore. That crowd that we're intolerant, but they can't stand us. They're the. I got hurt in a Baptist church. (laughs) I was hurt. What, What do you want a plaque? You want a t-shirt? We got him at our church. It's got my picture on it. It says, and he did it. (laughs) Said she's left me. It all started with that no boundary. There ought ought to be some lines drawn tonight. There he was, and David's looking at that Bathsheba. And I can hear that contemporary music playing it down, 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 Nobody's saying nothing. And one fellow said, Amen. David, you don't, you don't want to do this. Right. Right. Uh-oh. 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 
And one said, this contemporary music's wrong. And one said, these new Bibles, that ain't it. And one said, just rubbing shoulders with somebody that rubs shoulders with anything that goes, that ain't what we are. And one said, this immodesty is not going to get it. Let's stand together, our heads are bowed now. Why, why not tonight, you be the one. You be the one back in Modesto, California. You be the one in Chico, California. You be the one in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Why don't you be the one in Nashville, Tennessee? Why don't you be the one? They're going to start playing an invitation hymn. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. 